So there is much to talk about. Let's go straight to our panel. Joining us here in Washington, D.C., Andrea Murta. She's the deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Latin America Center. With us from Moscow is Maxim Mikhailov. He focuses on the Asia-Pacific region for the Russian Academy of Sciences. Saurabh Gupta is an Asia-Pacific international relations analyst and a resident senior fellow with the Institute for China-America Studies. And joining us from Beijing is Shindu Xu, and Shindu is a political analyst with China Radio International. Welcome to you all. We are told to think of BRICS as a giant leafy tree protecting the five member nations and then hopefully one day protecting much of the rest of the world economies as well. Let's hear what the respected foreign minister of China, Wang Yi, has to say on the eve of the conference getting underway in the Chinese city of Shaman. BRICS is not an exclusive club. The impact of BRICS cooperation reaches far beyond the five countries. The BRICS mechanism has become an important platform of solidarity for emerging markets and developing countries to enhance cooperation and safeguard common rights and interests. It also plays an increasingly important role in promoting international peace and development. Now, when President Xi took over the chairmanship of the BRICS nations for the year of 2017, he wrote to everybody and said, let's get together in August and let's have a conversation about how we have have done in the previous eight years or so. Let's take stock, in other words, but let's also try and come up with a blueprint to throw things forward into the future. Let's go to you, Xin Du Xu, China Radio International in Beijing. Now, the countries cooperate on areas like hydropower and nuclear power, financial interests, of course, and I think that's how they hope to take things forward in the future, also IT. In your opinion, do you think that the BRICS experiment has lived up to its expectations, or has it even exceeded them? Well, uh, it's really about uh, like uh, what kind of expectation you have. Of course, there are different opinions about uh, what's a priority for BRICS countries. Should it be the uh, uh, internal cooperation among the five big powers, or should their priority be uh, see their involvement of uh, international issues, uh, like uh, there's some of the hot spots areas, like uh, uh, Korean Peninsula nuclear issue, and of course, uh, like uh, climate change, things like that. Uh, I think uh, so far, obviously, they have been quite focusing on the internal uh, cooperation among the five uh, powers. Like, uh, for example, China has imported uh, a lot more stuff from the rest of the four countries than from the average uh, uh, foreign trade with other countries. Uh, you know, the latest figure is about like more than 33 percent uh, Chinese import from uh, the rest of the four countries. Uh, and uh, from South Africa is more than 35 percent. So I think the cooperation has been going on very well. Now, President Xi is calling this summit a stronger partnership for a brighter future. Andrea Murta, Brazil is having tough times, isn't it, economically and politically. How has it helped Brazil to be a member of BRICS? Well, Brazil is in a tricky position right now. Uh, membership is ever more important now, especially because of the turmoil that uh, the country is facing. Uh, on the one hand, it, uh, Brazil is uh, really looking for a foreign investment because domestic investment is so low. So being part of a group that has China, Russia, India, China is the biggest uh, commercial uh, partner that Brazil has, and uh, uh, Russia and India are also part of the top 10 economies that Brazil has trade with. So it's, it's extremely important for the country to be part of a group of such greater economies at this moment. Maxime, Politically, also, it's important for them. Maxime, in Moscow, your country is struggling under the weight of UN and US sanctions, of course. How has it helped Russia to be a member of BRICS? It's, uh, uh, speaking economically, it's not that obvious. Uh, I mean, there are sanctions, there is a sanctions problem, and it's much easier for Russia to communicate with its BRICS partners than with the Western world. Uh, but uh, politically, uh, the memberships in BRICS uh, has a tremendous impact, and it's uh, of uh, big importance to Russia, because uh, it uh, lets Russia uh, not to feel isolated. And if you remember uh, the G20 summit in Australia, uh, it was a BRICS country who showed the most of solidarity with Russia. 
and it's still like this. So even uh, when there is a G20 meetings, so there is a, a, a separate meetings with BRICS countries, and they usually uh, support each other politically, at least on the level of declarations. So I mean, for Russia, uh, uh, political uh, political aspects of being members of BRICS is, more, uh, is probably a more important than economical aspects. Yes, that separate communique by the BRICS nations at the last G20, that was certainly an historic moment. Sarab in the studio, India has its economic difficulties right now as well, despite stellar growth over the last handful of years or so. Right now, GDP is beginning to wane. How is BRICS helping India? BRICS is important for India from the perspective, economically, that India has not been adequately integrated uh, into the world economy. It, it is a large country, but it is not sufficient, doesn't do sufficient amount of trade, import-export trade with other countries in the world. The more it gets integrated, particularly its manufacturing sector, the better it will be. It is not always easy to find, to cr have trade agreements with many developed countries because some of their demands are fairly stiff. And BRICS provides an arena, along with other forums like the RCEP negotiations, where it can gradually integrate into the world. Secondly, India is also a developing country, and many of the, and the, we have the BRICS Bank, and we have other nascent uh, multilateral banks like the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, which provide avenues and, and, and funds for its own internal development. Yes. So from that perspective, developmental and integrationist, I think it's important for India. Yes, we haven't mentioned the Development Bank until this moment. And then you can add on to that. Let's come to Shindu out in Beijing. You can add on to that films and sport and youth issues and culture. All of these are areas that I think China would like to see BRICS move much more towards in the future on top of the cooperation that we've already spoken about. Uh, that's right, um, it's especially for this year, you know, if you look at the theme, it's a deepening the partnership uh, part of that. So for the Chinese uh, side, of course, uh, um, you know, like uh, unity or coherence of this uh, uh, very important group, especially if they can speak with one voice, if they are united, uh, obviously they will become more powerful um, and easy to be heard by the international community. I think the, you know, the Chinese side stress very much, you know, this unity. At the same time, China also talked about uh, this uh, internal, uh, like, a, uh, like exchange of, uh, of a personnel, exchange of a culture, understanding of a culture. So they have this, uh, you know, like a China year of a BRICS, and also they have the jointly produced uh, uh, movies, and also they have this sports games among the five powers. So all these are, you know, these kind of activities will help enhance the understanding and the exchanges among the five countries. Remember, they are far away from each other, yes. like China, you know, Brazil, China, South Africa. Actually, there is a little, you know, very little understanding of each other. If you talk to people, do you know, you know, BRICS and uh, who are the members? A lot of people have uh, probably no information about that. And yet, Suhab, in the studio, China's bid to increase the size of BRICS membership, the so-called BRICS Plus, was actually blocked by India. Why was that? It's, it's been a little bit of a tricky affair with, with regard to India in context of India-China relations. Uh, the BRICS would be best served by having more big emerging economies join the BRICS and then having a platform by, on the basis of which they can then have development partner to development partner relations with other South-South countries. Uh, India, for some reason, one of the main, main countries which is looking and would like to join BRICS and would be an ideal fit for BRICS is Indonesia. Right. Like India, independent-minded country. It's a very diverse, secular country. It has a large Muslim-majority population. But India has just not been forthcoming enough in, that, in this regard. It's not entirely clear to me, but I think it's the Indian position which needs to change or evolve over time so that BRICS becomes a... Uh, the premier emerging South South emerging market and South and 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 South South Forum, which can then leverage its power in terms of cooperation vis-a-vis -vis many of the developed country on many of the global challenges. I wonder if, as Belt and Road develops down the years, whether that will have an impact. Yes, it will. But I think 
in any case, the BRICs are moving on a good track in terms of their uh, co-financing of projects in, 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 in various spheres. I think the New Development Bank has been a, a very welcome institution in this regard. And what's important in this, fa in, this, in this space is that it is showing that there is space for a development bank different from people like the World Bank, which have, which really as, you know, the Chinese talk in terms of the AIIB being lean, clean, and green, the new development bank also can be exactly that type of this thing and show how uh, development can be done differently from just that one model which we have at the, which is set up by the World Bank mm. and by the developed countries. Andrea in the studio with me, the, the idea of expansion is not completely off the table, is it? Because President Xi Jinping has invited the likes of, mm. I've got four of them down here, Guinea, Thailand, Mexico and Tajikistan, and I think Egypt is the other country, the so-called BRICS plus five, who've been invited to take part, but really be on the sidelines this weekend in Shaman. What role will they play? Why are they being invited then? Well, for countries like Brazil, I think the more the merrier at this point, uh, especially because Brazil really focuses on the economic aspects of the BRICS, and so to, the, they can uh, get cash from wherever they can find it. Uh, Brazil is also working on uh, specific agreements with Mexico, for example. So having Mexico there at this moment as part of a group, uh, of a larger group who helps Brazil uh, in their dialogue. But I think there are structural problems that the BRICS have to overcome before enlarging itself. For example, the, the new development bank, the BRICS Bank, doesn't have the structural capacity to uh, expand too much at the moment. They have a plan that in 2021 they'll be in every um, area of the globe. And that's an ambitious plan that uh, we're hoping uh, comes to fruition but it's still to be seen whether they're going to be able to do that. And Maxime, in Moscow, does, does Moscow feel the same way? I mean, there's lots of sat former Soviet satellites around Russia that I'm sure you would like to bring in some way or another. Uh, it's probably most of all is a Chinese initiative, and uh, I feel it corresponds with uh, One Belt, One Road initiative. So that BRICS to position itself as a leader of emerging market of the developing world uh, in general and not just of the biggest economies uh, of uh, uh, the biggest emerging economies and for Russia uh, is is indeed a, a little bit tricky because it's difficult to predict uh, who will join BRICS uh, and how will it operate because it's not secret that it's already a problem of coordination within BRICS because of, uh, as my Chinese colleague mentioned, there are two different countries, uh, two different cultures, and it's difficult to coordinate between them. And if we speak about the expansion, it would be even more difficult. So uh, I believe we should think twice uh, before expanding BRICS and before introducing a BRICS plus or whatever.